Yo, 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 YouTube. I found a perfect solution for carrying some graded cards throughout a card show, and I want to share it with you. So check this out. I was thumbing through my Facebook feed yesterday, and I came across this suggestion for a unconventional graded card case carrier, whatever you want to call it. And I'd referred to this a little bit in my nationals video on something that's an essential um, thing to have for the show. And that's a way to carry around your cards. And we talked a little bit about using a backpack and a wheelie bag and things like that. The problem is when it comes to graded cards. So graded cards, they're in that plastic case, but that plastic case can be vulnerable to cracking, scratching, things like that. So you don't necessarily want to just throw them in a bag or throw them in a box. So most collectors, investors have a, some sort of a storage carry case um, with locks and things that they carry with them. Some of the ones made specifically for cards, I think are overpriced, taking advantage of the collector investor market, of course. But I found this solution on my Facebook feed and they're sold by Harbor Freights, which as you know, sells extremely reasonable priced um, home improvement products, if you want to call it that, uh, saws and drills and things like that. But anyway, so there's this company out there that's been around forever and called Pelican. And I've used a lot of their cases for my prop weapons that I've built and things like that and my other hobby. But I thought, well, maybe they would be great for cards. Well, turns out uh, Harbor Freight sells this kind of generic version of Pelican called Apache. And this is an Apache right here. So this is the little one. This is perfect for me um, because I don't have a ton of cards that I'm going to haul around with me. They do make this in like four or five more sizes. This is what's called the 1800. There's a 2800, a 3800, a 4800, and then I believe a 6800, which is long. So it would be made for rifles and things like that. But anyway, so this is a completely customizable case. So what do I mean by that? So let's take a look at some of the features of this case and why I believe this is a great option. First, it's completely waterproof and it actually has a um, valve on the front to release pressure. So if you're going to take this under depths of water, uh, I don't know why you would, but uh, in case you want your cards in the bottom of the ocean, I guess, um, you have that. It is uh, an indestructible plastic, meaning you can drive over it. I've seen videos of it. Um, again, not something I think you would want to do, but just in case you you come across some something big that could you think could damage this, it's it's pretty indestructible. Um, dust proof and impact proof. It has some of the details on the on the sticker here. And then um, it does have spaces for padlocks. So there's these two, two holes on either end. You can hang some, some padlocks on. Um, and it does have really nice snap um, snaps on, on them that are pretty solid and indestructible themselves. So let's take a look at the inside of this. So when we open it here with these two latches, This is what it looks like on the inside. Now I've put one of my PSA graded cards in there already. And so you can see kind of how I've already started to construct this. It's in there very solidly. Um, you can tip, tip it upside down and shake it. It's not going anywhere. Um, so it'll be perfect for, for carrying it. So the way this works on the inside is it comes in these with these adjustable foam layers and you can use as many layers of these as you want. I used two of the three. So I actually have an extra layer, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, 
maybe I could use this for a different way to do something with cards. I don't know. But anyway, it comes with these three layers. And the what I mean by customizable is the foam is made entirely of these little um, little foam squares that are that are perforated on the inside. So you can actually punch out a row of these little cubes for the exact size you need for whatever item it is that you're going to be putting in the case. So in this case, of course, a graded card. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this card out so we can take a look at what I've done here. So mine's in there pretty tight and I did that on purpose. Um, I am actually putting the cards in sideways and then I'm going to do so basically this is the first row of squares then the second row of squares and so on and so forth. I think I can fit 11 or 12 cards in here which is plenty for me to carry around. Um, now the bigger cases one of the things that's great about them is they're they're deeper so you can actually put the you can tear the foam out and have the cards standing up so you can see the label easier. Um, obviously if you have more serious cards or you're carrying a lot more cards, you would want to go up to those bigger sizes. Now the beauty of this guy right here is the cost. This was 13 bucks. So less than it costs to even slab a card these days. I paid to protect a whole stack of cards that I'm going to bring to the show. Now I'm going to tear all my rolls out evenly because all of my graded cards are PSA graded cards, but you may have to do this uh, a little differently in size. If you have BGS and things like that, you might want to go um, this way instead if you're doing BGS because you might need more space, um, but then obviously you could fit less cards in as well. So you have to decide what works for you that way. So the PSA cards, fit in here pretty tight but again the foam to some degree is learning and adjustable and I don't plan to take them in and put them take them out that often um, so having them in there nice and snug for me is the best way to go okay so we're gonna take a look at this a little bit closer and I can show you when I punch a row out how that looks so again you're just gonna kind of Dig your fingers into the next row that you want to remove and start popping out some little foam blocks. So there we took the first foam block out. Now you're going to want to obviously skip a row of foam as you go so that your cards aren't banging into each other. You have to be kind of careful because every, every piece of this foam is perforated and you don't want to tear out too many of the wrong, the wrong blocks or you lose some of the protection. Now, if you have a few that you rip out that you don't want to, it's okay. You can set them back in there. Um, you can also, from my understanding, get more of these um, foam sheets. You can order just the sheets, I believe. Here, let's do this. This will focus a little better. So, obviously, if you're doing the bigger ones, this is a lot more... Um, work <laughs> because you're going to have a lot more rows probably to remove but this little case it's not too bad and you can see I'm getting some foam out that I really don't want to come out so that's just part of it that's the downside to the perforated foam it's easy to take out but that means it's easy to take out okay so there we've got our next row all set this will fit our next card perfectly so again remember i said this fits pretty tight and i didn't punch out the bottom row of foam yet so this is going to stand up taller but you'll get the idea at least so then what we have to do so we'll put this in here so there you have it i've got the second card in place I can fit card number three, four, five, six. It looks like six cards I can fit in here uh, if I do it every other row. So, 
I know some people will do two rows at a time and then they can put two or three cards in together. Uh, so it's up to you. That's why it's customizable. You can do it however you want. All right, here's everything packed in there. You can see the, the foam is in there pretty nice in between. It, it's certainly not perfect by any means. Some of the foam kind of, um, you know, folds around a bit and stuff, but certainly very protected. Top shot's nice. Um, got my foam in on both ends, plus in the middle to protect them. They can easily still see what the cards are. Um, since there's only six in there, I mean, you can, at a glance, you can see what the cards are. So they don't necessarily need to stand up, not like the, the bigger cases. But just a nice, easy solution for those not looking to spend a lot of money, want their cards protected. Um, but don't have, you know, super high-end stuff or a ton of cards you're going to be carrying with you. This is a great, great way to do it. Now, I do have this double row of foam back here. I might punch out. This is the last um, row of squares that punches. This is the border is solid to hold it together. So I might punch this out, and then I could put maybe three cards in here in this last slot. So that could be a good spot to use for... Uh, if I have some really low end stuff that I just want to stick in the case to stay safe, um, but not as concerned about it banging into other holders and such. Now you could also, of course, use these for top loaded cards or one touch cards or whatever. You would just have to, you know, kind of measure out how you want the cards laid in here for your uh, punching out your foam. I did have an extra sheet and... Um, this one didn't stay together too solid, so I was happy that I had that because uh, it gave me another another chance to punch out punch out a second sheet. So there you have it. Now you're all packed, ready to go to the show. Bring your few cards with you, either you're looking to sell or show off, whatever the case may be. Well, there you have it. That is my idea for a well, not my idea, an idea that was presented to me that I thought was a good one um, for carrying cards at a show safely. And if you want more details, I will put a link to the Harbor Freight uh, item down below for the Apache cases. In case you want to order if you have a Harbor Freight in your town. Mine had several of each size, so it was easy to just walk in and pick one up. I will probably buy one of the bigger ones just in for certain situations where I would want to carry more cards around. But I do like the small option. It would fit in my backpack. Easy to carry around, doesn't get in the way. And then as you um, see here, I did customize the little um, Apache logo label window on top with um, some components I cut out of my business card. So my QR code and then my addresses for my store and my YouTube channel and I will attach those directly to the case as well. So when um, dealers, buyers, um, viewers, anybody asks, you know, where's your YouTube channel and stuff like that, I'll have that code for them to simply scan right on the case and, um, you know, the other information. I do have several business cards I'll be bringing with me to hand out, um, but obviously those cost money. So if someone doesn't want the card and they just want a quick, you know, look up your channel and subscribe, um, it's a good option to have something where they can simply get to that website and get that taken care of without having to hand it out. So that's it for today. The video I'm going to make tomorrow is going to be interesting. It'll be the start of the sales challenge to the national. So we're about 15 days out, 16 days out. Um, math is not my strong suit early in the morning. But anyway, we're, we're about that time frame out. And I would like to reach 2,000 in sales by the time I leave for the national. Now I know there's expenses and other things in, included in in um, you know sales price as far as lo looking at profit, but I want to keep this simple. I just want to look for $2,000 in sales. I understand it's going to be less than that in profit, but um, it's an easy goal to measure, and obviously there will be profit in those numbers. So I'm going to start that tomorrow. I've had Quite a few sales since the weekend um, so I'm actually kind of retro starting this to Monday if you will uh, I did talk about it in previous videos so transparency there 
Um, it's not like I had a bunch of sales and I thought, hey, let's put out a challenge because I'll know I'll meet it. But anyway, um, so the goal will be $2,000 to sell by the 28th of July. Um, so I'm going to make um, my normal sales day videos as we go along, and I will add up those totals to see if we hit that goal. So wish me luck. But thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please like, um, consider subscribing, and ring the notification bell if you'd like to be informed of any other videos when I release them. Otherwise, have a great day, and we'll see you again.